Are we live yet? That's the question. That's the question of today. I think we are. I have no clue. We are. Amazing. Hey, it's with the OBS uh, shenanigans. What is up, everyone? Welcome on this beautiful Sunday uh, afternoon, I would say. A little bit sick. Well, not sick. It's I don't know what's going on. Uh, but it's fine. I feel great. I feel... I feel... Look at this. I feel like this. Um... Yeah, wait, I just need to do some stuff here real quick, right? So, um, tweet. Announcements on Discord, of course. Tell me everything. Well, guys, hey, tell me what's up. What did you do this week? Good week? Bad week? You went to the gym? Some injuries or something? I'm injured on my fucking calf today. I'm not quite sure why. I was running sex, six, sex. I was running six kilometers. <laughs> it's already too much. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Wait, where is my screen actually? What's going on here? What is up? Osama Ibrahim, of course, always. Carlos Gomez, good morning. Islamicom, hi. Ibrahim Gomez, too much Ibrahims today. Ice bear, of course. Hey, ice bear here. Hey, like I said before, where is the time? Where is the time seven months ago where I came online for two or three people waiting in the room? And now, 17 people waiting for me to come online. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm so thank you. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I highly consider to do so, right? I highly consider to do so. Today's gonna be an interesting one. It's gonna be an interesting stream. Um, not gonna lie. So, <laughs> first of all, guys, <clears throat> before we start, something very important. Starting soon. Wait, what screen I need to... This one, maybe. Beautiful transition. Look at that. Before we start uh, this beautiful uh, educational stream, uh, I need to show you that for the people that are willing to level up as a Golang engineer, I made fulltimegolab.com. It's over 50 hours of stuff online. Hey, just the way I am. No scripted lessons, GG, you and me, everything. Introduction, concurrency, APIs, microservices, gRPC, Prometheus, Grafana, Docker, the whole shebang, blockchain, distributed systems, how to land a job. Look at this. How many things? This <laughs> is crazy. You and me for over 50 hours. Hey, that's the deal. Go to fulltimegolab.com, 30% off, only limited, right? Why do I need to do this? Because I'm a businessman, guys. Hey, uh, I can also uh, make some sponsorships with some VPNs, with some shady VPNs, VPNs or something, and uh, or, or whatever, right? But hey, I'm not going to do that. So I'm basically going to advertise something that's beneficial for me, right? No Twitch today. Uh, pff, nah. There's only like three people watching me from Twitch. Who cares? I mean, hey, this is what it is. Nobody cares about that, right? Um, my audience sits on um, on YouTube, not on Twitch. You know what I mean? Twitch is for reaction, uh, hanging out, shenanigans. You know what I mean? This is here to get better physically, professionally, and mentally. YouTube, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to say something, uh, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, shout out from Belize, looking forward to using a framework. Yes, and that's basically uh, the thing today. The question rather is, do I need to set myself on full screen for a while or not? Uh, maybe I do. I'm thinking about this uh, because I'm going to tell a story, right? Because Twitch is for rest. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically... Um, I've been, I've been, as we know, right? The meta is shifting, right? The meta is shifting. Um, when I started out as a programmer, long, long, long way back, uh, I think I started at 16, but that's not really uh, professionally, right? So I would say, um, I don't know, maybe 15 years, right? Professionally, and back in my day, there was only something like, it was very simple, right? It was very um, 
guided. There was no such thing as, as influence. There was no such thing as uh, speed is going to be a bottleneck and, and all that stuff. He had PHP and he had Django, uh, Symphony and PHP. You had Cake PHP, all these streamworks, and you had Ruby on Rails. And basically everything was written in these things, right? You just had like these MVC concepts, right? And everything is written in these things, right? GitHub, uh, Spotify, uh, Bitbucket, all these things, all these big companies. As of to, as we know, as, as of today, they are basically written in these in these frameworks, in these MVC ish kind of style. Does it mean that we need to make an MVC kind of style? Of course not. But I'm just saying, right? Uh, and everything was nice, right? You just open. But something is wrong with my headset. Yeah, everything was nice, right? You had. Uh, your framework and basically uh, you, you installed your framework and everything was there for you right you had uh, your models uh, you had your database your validation layer you have, you have your handlers your controllers and everything was fine right and in a blink of an eye you basically could boot up an application serialization views and all that it was amazing right we, we didn't need to care about anything but of course <coughs> The meta is shifting, right? The meta shifted from, I don't know why, because all these big companies, right? And uh, these startups from back in the day, they, they basically, after years, right? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about years. They came to such a scale and not the scale of having the user, the requests, but the incoming requests, right? The user, the, well, you have two scaling problems, right? The first scaling problem they had was basically uh, the developers, right? Their teams were growing. And the problem is, if your team are growing, uh, it, it's, it's going to be very hard to work in a monolith, right? It's very hard because if you have 50 developers working in one fucking code base, that's it. It's going to be nasty, you know what I mean? Merge conflicts and all that shenanigans, coordination. So that was a problem, right? And I, I think, in my opinion, that was basically the biggest problem. Not the the bottleneck of the request per second, right? Because you can easily scale horizontally. And by the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if your application is doing 100 MS response time, round trips or you have one, 120, 90, sometimes maybe 180. Who cares, right? Nobody cares. It's, it's, it's HTTP. A human, a human eye cannot even see, cannot even, cannot even grasp the concept of 100 MS. Right? So speed... It's always been a scam that's being told, right? And especially right now with all these influencers, right? And rust and speed and speed and speed, you know? No, it's not true. That's false, right? That's that's completely wrong. But I can understand that the problem uh, back in the day came from uh, 50 developers working in the same code base. Problematic, right? So that basically uh, all these, can I say this word, soy dev? Hey, take it with a grain of salt. But all these developers, basically, they say, oh man, uh, uh, Spotify and, and, and Shopify and GitHub, they're all, and uh, Netflix, and they're all uh, migrating to a service-oriented design. And they thought Kubernetes, Docker came, and everybody wants to be complex, right? Everybody wants to be complex, I don't know why. I've never basically been a fan of Kubernetes. I think it's amazing. But uh, for me, it's basically complete useless because I don't have uh, a 250 employee company, right? I don't have a, a 1 million request per second uh, application, you know what I mean? And probably you, you, you're not also, right? Because by the day I have a 1 million um, request per second application, I'm probably already sipping margaritas on the beach, you know? So there's a lot of scam going on in this tech uh, world where everybody is trying to influence everybody and uh, to migrate to this service-oriented design. But we see right now that this meta is shifting back. Music is too loud. That can, that can be perfectly fine. Wait, let me do this. Is this better? All right. Is the music better, guys? Let me know. This may be too, too quiet. What's going on with the stupid chat here? I mean, stupid chat window, <laughs> not the stupid chat, you guys, right? Uh, I think this is going to be better. So the problem is basically that if, if you can see that, that the meta is shifting back, right? Uh, 100% agreed. Yeah, 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 it's fine. So the meta is shifting back from these services, 
because people are getting, I, I mean, for example, Next.js and all that stuff is amazing. And why is that? Because after seven months, and the talking is almost done, because after seven months of uh, producing content on YouTube, after seven months of streaming, there are the things that basically came to uh, that that basically came to my mind. Uh, I mean, uh, not came to my mind. How can I say this? Um, I had an eureka moment. You know what I mean? All these people coming to my channel asking me questions. They are all having the same problem. They come to go from JavaScript, Python, Ruby, or C++, or, or Java, whatever. They, they are good programmers, right? Those people know how to program. But they come to Go, and suddenly, they don't know how to... They are lost. They are completely lost. How do I need to structure my project? <laughs> no idea. What framework do I need to use? No idea. How do I need to model my database in the framework? No idea. How, I, how, I need, how do I need to do validation? <laughs> no idea. Nobody has an idea, right? Because by the end of the day, we, we all came from these frameworks where strong opinionated frameworks like a Ruby on Rails, and we can laugh about Ruby on Rails, but by the end of the day, it's, it's in my, I think it's the framework that made the most money, that, that made people rich. That's what I think. Ruby on Rails made people rich. <laughs> it is what it is. It's, it is what it is. Because it's easy. You install it, boom, pop, pop, boom, boom, ship. Take the money and set margaritas on the beach, right? So now the people come to go and they have something like uh, Gen or um, Fiber or all these things. You have like uh, Gearbox and all that stuff, but they all do the same thing. They all do the fucking same thing. And um, I was thinking maybe maybe we can do some, um, I was thinking around like maybe we need to make, maybe I need to make, what's the problem? How, how does, how, why is nobody reinventing the wheel? Why is nobody, why is Golang making no evolution anymore? Because I made a framework, uh, Weavebox, right? I, I, I can open it up if you want. It's gonna be, um, I can open it up. <clears throat> you guys know that I have a video of this. I don't know where, it, where that thing is. Weavebox, did I clone this? Need this thing? No, it's not. That's the Weavebox example. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I have a framework, Weavebox, which is basically the exact same thing. What Fiber, what Gen, what, what all these frameworks do. The exact same thing. So, and that's eight years ago. That basically means that from eight, year, eight years till now, pff, nobody made any evolution. Nobody did any invention. It's the same shenanigans. It's the same problem. <clears throat> You could with love. Rust might be fun, so I will not shit on too much. I uh, do not like adding special lip for processing JSON. I think it's very powerful to have in a core lip. Yes. Um, and I think why it's time. I think it's time to basically try to reinvent, try to make um, HTTP straightforward, guided, for these people. You know what I mean? Because by the end of the day, if you want to make money, if you want to make a project, what you're going to do is be, you, need to, you need to be fast, right? You need to be fast. It's all about execution. It's not about speed. <laughs> well, it's the same thing, but it's not about speed of your application. You know what I mean? It's completely not about that. That's, 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 that's later on maybe, but not now. That's after five years of your project. Maybe earlier if you're lucky, right? I, I mentioned this before. It's all about the speed of deploying your application. It's the speed of shipping features to your customers. And in Golang, the community is the big problem. That's, that's, that's maybe a shocking, a shocking thing, but it's the community's fault. The Golang community is cock blocking its own language to be great, to be popular, to be more popular. And the reason is because uh, <laughs> the reason is because what the Golang community says is okay, Golang, you use standard library and you do everything yourself. Don't use frameworks; they're bad. Don't use ORMs; they're garbage. 
You need to do everything yourself. And by they have a point. They have a point. But for the web, for making a Netflix clone, for making an admin UI, for making all these simple tools, all these um, quickly bootstrapped applications with a front end on, on attached to it, you need to write a lot of boilerplate code. And if you go to one of these frameworks like Gen or Fiber or even Weavebox, right, which is the complete same, you still, uh, the only thing you have is a battle handler approach, right? You don't have anything else, you know what I mean? And the reason why there is no evolution here, innovation, is because people are afraid from the Golang community. They are afraid because they know the moment you're going to come up with some kind of a heavyweight, idiomatic framework for HTTP, they're going to fucking clap your fucking cheeks with their tiny little arms, you know what I mean? And their testosterone of 0.1. That's what they're going to do. And everybody is afraid, but I'm not afraid because, like I said, I'm running this place. You know what I mean? I don't care. I don't fucking care. Of course I care because in, in some kind, I care about these people because if I make a video, there are always these guys that are responding, right? There are always these guys that are responding with, 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 I don't know what they're doing. but So I care, but I don't care enough. You know what I mean? I don't care enough. So uh, I think it's time to basically uh, invent uh, and basically make go great again for applications because it's the it's seven months of YouTube, it's seven months of receiving comments. Nobody knows how to do stuff. So we're gonna provide, or we're gonna try to provide, or we're gonna try to come up with some with some ideas to build something where somebody comes from JavaScript or from Python or from Ruby to go can do ex almost the same with all batteries included. Yes, that's the thing. All right. Oh man. <coughs> All right. Let's 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 see what we can do. Right. Let's see. So we're gonna do some pseudo uh, stuff. Right. This don't take this uh, too for granted. This is pseudo. I'm gonna say it again. Normally I I don't care, but I need to say this because people are, oh, they don't understand. Right. They come to me. Oh, why don't you use fast ATP? Pseudo. Chill. We are trying to be creative, and we're trying to explore here. You know what I mean? Because by the end of the day, I think uh, if you if you check all these languages like JavaScript, very good language, by, they're all good languages. There's no bad language, right? But it does not make sense for a Rust to have to make this thing in Rust because Rust has its purpose in another spectrum. Python, yes, and Ruby already have this. Golang, not because the community is cock blocking it. You know what I mean? All right, so the first of all, uh, let us see what the problem actually has here with these handlers, right? So how does it work? How does these things work? So you have something like, um, the first problem I have is, for example, you have a user handler, right? Uh, and that's going to take in, like, I, mean, I need to mock this up real quick here uh, to, to show, right? Uh, let me say type context here. <coughs> I need to show you things first, right? We're going to say this, going to be a context. Uh, an error, of course, right? Let's return now. Right, this is basically a handler uh, in every framework on the planet, right? And I think it makes sense, right? Uh, because HTTP handle is garbage because it doesn't return an error, right? I don't know why they don't do it. Uh, it's it's the, the biggest mistake they made. Rob Pike and team, I'm so sorry, but HTTP handler needs to return a fucking error. Uh, yeah, but hey. But they are releasing arenas, so nobody is going to use it anyway, uh, but uh, they, they're probably going to, yeah, I don't know. So that's the handler. The problem I have with this is the first thing, right? Um, let's say you're going to have a user here. What people do, they make a user, it's going to be a structure, right? And this user is going to have an ID because it's tied to your database, uh, for example, Postgres or something else. They're going to have an email, which is going to have a string. It's going to have, um, I don't know, a username or something, also a string. So what you're going to do then, you're going to say here, for example, uh, first examples, like I said, first the problem, then the solution, right? 
uh, HTTP handle is it handle handle funk I don't know uh, something like this slash or framework dot actually let, let's do it good right what the frameworks do is this you're gonna have a post uh, post routes string uh, handlers I need to make this type all good again uh, handler like this it's gonna be a func see context errors handlers errors no nope. maybe and then we're gonna say um, handlers a new context with some shenanigans right and then we're gonna say here what you do in these frameworks you're gonna call of course it's gonna be an app app.post or a uh, fiber fiber dot, i don't know something like that right you know uh, people know what's going on right so you're gonna say post slash user for example and then you're gonna say um i'm gonna call this a little bit different uh handle create user with a context handle create user right Whoa, uh, are you making a framework? Uh, we are designing, we are trying to design some concepts for a framework, like how I see uh, missing things and why it's, why JavaScript and all these, and Ruby and all that stuff is, is much more, from from uh, a bootstrapping perspective, if you wanna make a project and you wanna bootstrap it very quickly, Go could be great, but isn't. JavaScript, Next.js for example, is amazing. You know what I mean? Next yes, Ruby, amazing, right? But we don't have something in GoLine. Of course, you have this Beagle stuff, but that's that's completely whack. We know, uh, right? So you have this handle create user here, right? So what's going to happen is, uh, what you're going to do, first of all, people are going to make the first mistake, and that's this. They're going to say var user, right? Uh, it's going to be this a user like that, right? And then going to say uh, if r is <coughs> going to be a JSON a new decoder. Of course, we don't have a request. That's no problem because what these frameworks do is this. They're gonna say r pointer HTTP request. Actually, that's bad. And that should be a copy of a request because having a pointer to a request in your application, is <laughs> baby, is so bad. Uh, but hey, and they're gonna have a W, which is going to be an HTTP uh, response writer. Uh, response writer, yeah, something like that. <coughs> that's a context here. So we're gonna say uh, c dot r right uh, decode me this user which gonna be a pointer well a reference and if the error is not null uh, what you're gonna do is this return null uh, r by the way save this and call it a day <sighs> body yeah of course it's nil i know guys i know we don't set it i know Pseudo. We're gonna make it better. We're gonna make it better, like I said. Gradually built. You know what I mean? Alright. <clears throat> so this already here, uh, two problems. Two big problems here, in my opinion. First of all, user is a problem. Because if you're gonna create a user, you're not going to if you do a data-oriented design, which is in my opinion very good, the problem is your user is going to be too big because there's gonna be an X amount of fields in here, right? which are going to be in here created, right? Which is unnecessary data. And you're gonna say, people are gonna say, yeah, that's obvious, but that's not always obvious for people coming from languages like Ruby or JavaScript, where everything is basically voodoo, voodoo witchcraft, and black magic, right? And then this, in these handle create users, I'm sick and tired. I'm completely sick and tired to do this each fucking time. JSON new decoder, body decoder news. This is, compl is for people coming from other languages. For me, this is second nature. For you, this is second nature. But for people coming from other languages, this is what the hell a JSON new decoder, body decoder and user, they are already, <coughs> they're already dying inside. You know what I mean? Let me get to see. Why is having a pointer to request bad? Uh, the problem is if you um, a request is basically a temporary thing, right? So basically your request lives in this scope, right? In handle create user, your request is valid. And basically also in your, uh, it's valid in your HTTP round trip, which starts from some middleware to 
some middleware or eventually your create user right? with, a, with a couple of onion layers on top of that. But when this function basically is returned, when the complete middleware stack is basically completed and returned, your request pointer is not valid anymore because this request is gone. There is no request. Request is, it's, it's GG. He's, but you still have this pointer. <laughs> That's, you, can, uh, you know what I mean? It's like having, having, a, it's like having sex with your ex-girlfriend. It's just bad. You know what I mean? It's not your girlfriend anymore. Are you still, ah, no man, no man. It's not good. It's having. It's actually having sex with your ex-girlfriend while having a new girlfriend. That, that It's so bad. You know what I mean? All right. So that's the first problem, right? This is something I want to fix. Then there are actually three problems here. Then the next problem. The problem is going to be if we have a front end, right? Are we going to return this user here, right? For example, here we're gonna uh, can I make a function here. For example, um, JSON. That's how they do it. That's uh, an error here, like like this. And then I'm gonna say here, for example, just v any, just for the sake of uh, making this work. Return r no, right? And you're gonna say here return uh, JSON. Probably the users. Actually, what you need to do uh, is basically the status code. Maybe actually HTTP status. Okay. Um, code int something like that. Just coming up with these with these simple things, right? So your front end is expecting ID, email, username. But what if you do this, right? This request is still valid. Nobody knows. You know what I mean? Yeah, but your test, of course, your test is going to fetch it. But what if you don't test it? You know what I mean? What now? I don't run a test. You see? Nobody is telling me right now that this is bad. There is an error. And I know a method where we can already know. We have a, we have a statically typed language. Why don't we abuse that? Why don't why is nobody coming up with new innovations? Why is everybody why is everybody stuck in their mind? You know what I mean? Why is everybody listening to the narrative of the world, the narrative of the Go community? <clears throat> That's a problem. To, already problem now, now we are at problem three. Problem three is this is a bad design, right? This user. How I want to see things is you need to do something like this. You need to split out your data, right? I'm not gonna call it models. This is data. User strict is a data. It's not a type, it's a type of course, but it's not It's not a model or it's an entity or a resource or uh, no, it's data. It's simple data, keep it simple. Thank you very much. I need to do my notifications on here. Thank you very much, uh, Uwe, uh, Alex Stanfield. I really enjoy your content and I appreciate an approach to SVE, Software Engineer. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you much for the $10 or 10 some currency donation. It doesn't matter. I'll, even if it's one cent, I'm happy. I'm, yeah, it's nice. Thank you very much, man. So, we need to split out in a good design. This is so fucking warm here. It's crazy. But hey, we need to split out our data with our request. So it's basically what this is gonna be. It's a little bit the same. Do you remember Ruby on Rails where you have this uh, params permit? Do you guys know that? I'm gonna show you this. Uh, look at this. Uh, Rails params permit. Look at this. Action controller params permit. <gasps> Here, params require person permit name H. When I started Ruby, Back in the day, yes, I did Ruby also. I did everything, you know what I mean? I'm the man of the world. I thought, what the fuck is this perma params permit? This permitting, I hated that. And I didn't realize this. Why, why, why is this needed? But it's very important. Because what it's gonna do, it's going to... It's, it's, it's going to filter out basically dog shit 
from your from your end user from from the outside world which is a nasty place to be as a application developer everything that comes from a user needs to be treated as cancer you know what i mean it's it's dirty it's it's ah. so i was thinking why don't we have something in go like that right and um so what you need to do instead of this user here, we're going to handle create a user, which is basically going to be, uh, you could say, for example, a create a user params. That's how I teach this, even in the full-time GoDev program, right? I'm teaching these concepts. So if you're not yet uh, on that level, fulltimegodev.com. And I'm happy to see you there as a student. Create user params is going to be a structure, right? And if you want to create a user, because, for example, this is going to have an ID. It's probably going to have... Um, I don't know, maybe some posts or something, right? Uh, posts, which is going to be a slice to any because I don't want to make posts. And it's going to have comments. No, that's posts, actually. Uh, maybe it's going to have uh, is admin or something, you know? Um, yeah, is admin. I'm just coming with things up, right? Just to give you an idea. We're going to say create user params. The only thing we want is maybe an email, which is a string. And it's going to have, uh, for example, a password or something, right? Password, password, you see? Because by the end of the day, that's the only thing we need for creating a U, uh, well, that's not true actually. There's login params to be honest. I'm completely garbage, don't mind me. Um, gonna make it as realistic as possible. Uh, last name. Never store uh, passwords. I'm always making this encrypted password, right? Encrypted password. Can I type? Yeah, like that. This is going to be your data, which is going to be basically a representation of your database, right? Because if you make it something for the web, you're always going to have a database, right? Most of the time. Unless you're saving it on a file, fine for me. You know what I mean? Um... <laughs> my eyes uh, yeah so this is basically create user params you're going to create a user email password first name last name right that's how it works we don't need is admin here we don't need posts we don't need an encrypted password we don't need that shit because maybe this is bytes for example right maybe in your data i don't know uh it, it is what it is it can be anything right maybe you're going to have uh some verification codes in here verification codes right we're going to be uh, an integer or something, right? We don't need that for create user params. So you can see that you can already make your application faster by doing a data-oriented driven design, which basically means that you're going to, okay, you maybe have duplicated things. Now people are going to say, yeah, but it's duplicated. Don't listen to that. They have no clue. Um, yeah, so basically that. So this is not going to be this user anymore. This is going to be, and the best thing is coming, guys. Hey, be prepared. Grab some popcorn and go to the toilet. Maybe you're going to jerk off a little bit, but be ready because it's going to be intense. Uh, so this is gonna, going to be the params or user params or whatever you want to call it. Some people call it P, D, V. It doesn't matter, right? Params. Uh, and it's going to be the user params, the create user params because we are very explicit here, right? And we're going to say this and create user params. Perhaps didn't need to change anything by the way. Of course, we're not gonna return this user here. Uh, there's no user anymore because now you're gonna call some shit, right? And that's gonna be a user. It's gonna be any, and then we can return this user, right? Call some shit, some logic, some DB shenanigans. I don't know, right? It's gonna return a user, and then you're gonna return this user beautifully to JSON, which most of the time you're gonna have some tags here, which gonna specify. It's gonna be a little bit of your view, right? Uh, and, and in Golang, you have these uh, JSON tags here, for example. Uh, how does it work? No idea. Something like that. Uh, JSON. Something like this, right? Uh, last name. Camel case, of course. Camel case. Um, and maybe the accurate password, you don't want to show this. So what you do is basically... Um, I need to copy this again. I'm so bad. Boom. It's going to be this, right? Something like that. Is it this? It's this. Or it's this. I have no clue. Uh, I need to look that up. I think this. Or this. <laughs> so one of the two. Which basically means, I don't think it's this. This is garbage. I think it's this. Chat, help me out right now. 
right? So you're gonna do some view things, which gonna determine what kind of data you're going to show to the front end. Come on, case. Um, all right, the next thing, and now it's gonna get interesting, underscore. Guys, it's like that, like I said. Uh, I'm not a JSON, I'm a, I don't do JSON that, that much, eh? All right, so the next thing is we still have this stupid problem here. Um, and the problem is that even though our front end is expecting this beautiful JSON object, right? And if we delete or we uh, add something else, or we basically delete last name because for some reason, uh, I don't know, maybe you're gonna, it, there's no first name anymore, no concept, it's gonna be the username concept. So first name and last name there, gone. It's a dash. God damn it! Guys, it's something. Figure it out. Look it up. Chat GPT. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> unbelievable. Now I'm completely lost. Uh, yeah, 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 here, here. So we changed this and nobody is telling us that there is a problem. We need to fix that. So what I was thinking, right? So uh, in the framework, what we're going to do is something like this, right? Um, how can we do that? That's what I want to do. I'm gonna, uh, guys, it's fine, it's fine, it's it's gone. The dash or underscore, it's gone. It's, hey, figure it out. Figure it out yourself. So, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna back to our handler each, handler create usage. Um, we want, in our route here, I think, we wanna basically specify, actually here, in post. Wait, how can I do this? Um, I wanna basically, force a type to be mo to be encoded in your request automatically with benefits you will see for example handle create user create user params something like that so it's gonna have two major benefits if we can do if we can pull that off I didn't test it so we need to fix, fix that out um, and I think Go Genetics is going to help us here, right? Uh, so what we could do is say something like um, T, any, any, yeah. Wait, we don't need this here, I think. Wait, first of all, I'm going to add this, all this bullshit here. Um, classic, classic golden gene uh, uh, shenanigans, right? Genetics. Uh, handle create user. We're gonna say T is any. Perfectly fine. Um, this is gonna. This is going to be deleted. This is going to be completely deleted. You're gonna see. This is gonna magic is gonna happen. Ma black magic. Uh, but first of all, I need to figure that out. I'm not a genetics uh, specialist here. Uh, cannot infer T, shut the fuck up. We're gonna say here, T is gonna be create user params. Is that true? Okay. But wait, we're not done yet. Because we can, we can collapse that. We can collapse that a little bit better. We're gonna see. Uh, you have to implement and marshal and skip the value. Yeah, but still, wait. Because if you work, yeah, you're gonna see why this needed. But I'm gonna collapse this because I know I can collapse it to a very simple thing, which is gonna make sense. Look at that. Wait. Give me some time. Give me some time to fix that out, right? Don't be too fast. Uh, we could say, for example, here, uh, I don't know what, what the name is gonna be. I have no clue. But we could say, for example, um, a request param. Something like that, right? And that's going to be T, which is going to be this context T, any. Look at this. Wait. All right. Let me try to do some voodoo. This is not true. This T any is garbage. It's gonna be this one, right? Handler T any. T. Context T. Of course, what we're gonna say here is uh, add it's going to be, we don't know. Yeah, you're gonna do HD. You're gonna do something like this, handler funk, right? 
if would if I would implement this for real, right, in the real deal, which I'm probably gonna do live and in videos, I'm not gonna use the standard uh, HTTP library. I would probably use something uh, like fast HTTP or something, right? So, which is gonna be a completely different approach. This is just some kind of a like I said, exploration and create and being creative, right? Hey, don't take things too serious. So you're gonna say something like. The response writer here, uh, also the pointer to the HTTP request. Uh. Can I please? Uh, R, W, something like that, right? And then we could say, wait, let me first see. Of course, this con like I said, this content, we're gonna make it that it's fast, that we don't use too much memory, we're gonna use pooling and all that stuff, but this is completely out of scope. Mon ami. Uh, context T, we're gonna see what's going on here. This is something we cannot avoid, right? This T, any context T, is we cannot avoid that. Uh, but we can avoid this. Which I'm actually, the, you see, we can avoid that. So this is gonna be the scope. This is gonna be the spec, right? Post user. Handle create user, create user params. So how is it gonna work? It could be something like this. If R is going to be json.new decoder R body decode into a var, uh, I, I don't know, it could be an entity or data or uh, rec data or whatever. I'm gonna call it, um, I don't know, like data or something. T, can we do that? Decode into this T here. Like data, I mean. And if the error is not nil, we can do some error stuff, right? We could do, I don't know, man, uh, log fail out, of course we got. What do we do in this case here, handle func? Um, probably return some JSON, I don't know, right? To do, handle, handle the error, right? Let's do a log fail out. We don't care. Um, yeah, and then we could say something like the request param, which is different for each post, right? It's only for posts and for puts and for all that shenanigans. It's going to be a rec data, something like that. I don't know, just thinking about something, right? Uh, you're gonna start so many projects, but are you gonna finish some? Uh, just asking, mm, most of the time not. Most of the time not. The chances we're gonna finish this project are very small. They are unlikely. But, um, does it matter? Like I said, we are here to explore, right? If, if it's not gonna work out, it's not gonna work out, right? It's no, no big of a deal. People are afraid to fail, people are afraid to build, right? You're probably playing League of Legends. You're probably sitting in your, uh, sleeping till 12 o'clock, I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm doing these things for free on the internet. Um, so I can share my ideas, validate my ideas, and maybe it's not gonna work out. And then, hey, no problem, then we move on. You know what I mean? Uh, but if everybody has the same mentality of not trying to come out in the open, and not try to make mistakes, not try to come up with out of the box ideas, the world is gonna be fucked up. You know what I mean? Uh, hey. How are you, my friend? Not quite sure. Are we friends? Maybe. I will send you my book so you can sign my uh, friend's book. You know what I mean? And make a nice picture. Uh, where are we? In one of your videos, you said you did some bug bounty programs before. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about that. Uh, at the end of the stream, ask me the same question again. Remind me of this. Uh, remind me of that. Oh, fast HTTP does not support HTTP2. One of the reasons why faster than core lib. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, wait. Uh, semi colon. 
was looking into start building an API framework just to get my hands dirty and came across fiber comparison with your Webox video. You're doing some of the best Google. Interview. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you very much. Um, that's basically, I'm going to give you a, a tip. This is what I'm doing my whole fucking life, right? In my free time, I was basically trying to make things better, in my opinion. Is it, was it better? Probably not, right? They, let, let's say only 1% of my projects I put on GitHub, you know what I mean? But I tried. Why? Because it keeps it keeps you creative, it, it gives you dopamine, it learns you a lot of stuff, and uh, if you... Like I said, the more times you're gonna try to hit the balloon, the more, the higher your chance is to hit the balloon. If you know what I mean, to to bullseye. You know what I mean, to bulls fucking eye. That is that's what you need to do, right? You need to increase your chances of uh, getting something um, popular, popularized. All right, so we have discrete user parameters. Fine. Uh, so the only thing is basically is this guy. So we can delete this, right? Uh, we can delete this. And what we can do is basically just say here that the user params, what we think, it, what we what we want is this shenanigans here, right? It's going to be the C dot the request params, which are going to be in JSON, right? Maybe there is a way to do it in an, but it's, the, the web is JSON, you know what I mean? There's no, don't need to, uh, actually we can, <coughs> you're gonna make your user here, Actually, I'm gonna return these things, right? And uh, we can log them out to see if it actually works. I don't know. Print a line. Uh, there's gonna be uh, the user params here, right? Um, yeah, this error we need to handle that. I know. Post user, let's do an HTTP. How this could work here is basically. Um, Make HTTP handler. Can I do this actually? Can I do this? Who went directly in this thing and call it a day? Nope. I need to think. I need to think very hard, guys. It's it's uh, maybe this is actually make uh, this thing. So I could actually do something like that. Funk make HTTP handler. Which is going to take in uh, h handler or handler. We're going to return HTTP handler func. We're going to paste that in. Damn it. That needs to be a T any. We're shooting ourselves. T. T. Yeah. A T T. Uh, huh. <laughs> Fuck this. Look at that. And some other stuff. Of course. I'm so sorry. I was a little bit. I was in the zone. You see that, guys? I was in the zone. I was. I was legit in the zone. I can. And I, yeah, it was amazing. I like that. Sometimes for four hours, not more. I mean, I'm in the zone. Uh, so there's going to be HTTP handler because I want to make it work with HTTP, right? To give you guys an ID. Uh, and then in the main, we're going to say HTTP. Of course, it's going to be app run, app serve, app start, app go, app launch, you know, all these stuff. Uh, but we're going to say HTTP listen. 
and surf to a port 3000. Uh, actually, the bigger the balls, the bigger the port. So I'm going to say 30,000. And uh, no. All right. Go run dot. Of course, what we're going to do now is split the screen, open up to their request, like this. And do something like HTTP. Um, 30k. User. Need to post. First of all, if you send this, uh, that's already a problem, but it's not bad. Let's do this. Why don't we have an arrow reach? Do we have this body? Nope. Oh yeah, that's because this, right? Uh, what we should do here basically is uh, return, do some error handling, proper error handling, like a centralized error handling. No big of a deal. That's that's not the thing. Uh, that's not the big the big problem we have in these frameworks. Uh, we could do like a, a W. Actually, we can do right. We can't. Um, So annoying. It's gonna be a right header or something. HTTP status. Bad request gateway. Requestos. Something like that. Can we do that? Oh, my music. Ah. Wow. Ah, you see. So wait. Yeah, that's better. Uh, so this is basically what we have right now, right? So basically what's happening, we are doing a request, a post request to our user, but it's not working. Why? Because we have a bad request. And of course the error, that's something out of scope right now, but that basically means we didn't do any validation. Look at it here, right? Look at it here. We, we, we didn't do anything, no JSON, no nothing. It's clean, it's mean, and we still have this protection already, right? Uh, how can it actually work? Let, let's let's make some some posts. It's going to be annoying uh, because we need to do an email here. Of course, you need to validate that, right? It's going to be foo at foo.com. Uh, but this is something we're going to talk about. You're going to have, for example, password uh, like that. It's going to be uh, hunters, of course. <laughs> can we please type? Yeah, hunters uh, like that. And then we're going to say your uh, username is going to be Mike. Uh, problem is, we probably gonna need. Uh, let me join some JSON here. Uh, email like that. Damn, can I not do that? That's crazy with this clipboard. Let's paste them all in here. Um, uh, let me say username here, right? Something like that. Make, there's no make file. You probably can't see this because it's in my uh, my thing here. Uh, okay, cool. You can see that, right? So I'm making this request here, right? Uh, and now we can see that we have our, our beautiful JSON object. And we didn't need to do anything. Here, look at our request handler. We didn't need to do anything. And the beautiful of this thing is that if you delete this username... Damn, that's not working. Because, of course, um, this is the same type. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey. Okay, that didn't work out. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. That, that that was not what I expected. But uh, it makes a lot of sense because you delete this username, your create user parents. It's, it's still going to be the create user parents, right? Uh, so that's good. Why aren't you using Go? Deal with him. Man, that, that's a big misspelling if you ask me. Uh, I don't know, because it's a little bit easier uh, for my eyes. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, and also with Thunder Request, if I need to show something, uh, it's a little bit better for me. For display purposes, educational purposes, it's a little bit better for me, right? Uh, but still, uh, besides that, this is amazing. Because we could do some, so much stuff if our request params changes to something else. For example, we're going to have a... Maybe it needs to have a verification, a verification code, right? Which is going to be an integer here. Let's do this. Boom. Do that. Paste that in. Paste this in here. And then we're going to say... Let's do code just to keep it simple here, right? Boom. 
Uh, now it's gonna work perfectly fine, right? Let's boot this up again. Make, no, we'll never make file. Go run dot here, boom, bats. Then say here. Actually, to be honest, what happens if you don't post this? It's gonna be empty, right? Default value, uh, which is gonna be perfectly fine. Okay, cool. That's for the, val that's for the validation step. Um, so annoying that I have no vim in this thing. Let's do some 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 crazy stuff, right? Boom, send this. Open up terminal. So now it's this. Perfectly fine. I think this this is amazing. This is gonna save me a lot of uh, headaches because uh, I don't like to do this JSON stuff all the fucking time in my controllers. I hate it. And basically, uh, what we have right now here is this post. We know that it's a create user params, which is completely separated from our uh, data, our internal business data, or internal data logic, data model, whatever entity structure, whatever you wanna call it. And if this changes, I can see directly from a user's perspective that this handler is going to, <laughs> that this handler is basically going to be serialized, that I'm, that I'm gonna work with create, uh, create, with create user params. What do you think about that? That's something, that's one of the ideas I came, came up with. The next thing is basically what you can also do is validation, right? Uh, because there are a lot of things for, for validation and how I, how I do validation is basically very simple. And the question is, can we automatically add that uh, in a very simple way? For example, like I said, these are just IDs that needs to be thought about, right? For example, where are request params? <coughs> oh, man. Here, create user params, for example. We could do something like this, right? Func p from params. Um, Maybe a pointer or no pointer, it does not need to be one. And we wanna say validate. Uh, and validate could basically return a slice of error, for example. Right. Uh, the validator v10 package. No, no, I know there's something like that, uh, which can be handy for sure. Uh, which you can implement in here. Like I said, these options are need to be need to be checked. Right, uh, need to be validated. So we can say, for example, here slice nil. Uh, actually, to be honest, just nil is fine for the sake of demonstration, right? And then we could do something like, for example, at the top of the page, we're gonna say uh, type validator. Again, it should be like this. The Go community wants this uh, ending thingies, this er ending thing. Uh, Go interviews are also basically trying to be very smart about that. They're gonna say, hey, yo, but interfaces, can you make me one? And if you don't do this, they're gonna say, oh, it needs to be, uh, you know, this 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 guy, this frustrated interviewer, like right? this this lead developer, oh, it needs to be, this is not the correct interface, idiomatic. I just wanna slap his cheek so hard, some, so, such people, right? It's so mean, I'm always getting angry. This doesn't make any sense to me to make this validator, but that's what the Go community wants, right? Uh, but uh, basically not anymore. So we could validate a ball. Hey, you know what funny is guys, whatever I write here, I'm gonna get slapped on the cheeks. I'm gonna get pitchforked anyway. You know, whatever I'm gonna name this thing, I'm gonna get, that. that's the tech community. Once again, nobody's gonna cheer at me for doing this. Everybody's gonna say, but validatable, that sounds so Java. But, but that's not the idiomatic approach in Golang. You know, there's all these people. I can ho hear the voices already. Right, let's call it validator then. Which is also people gonna say, oh, validator. That makes no sense because it's actually validator. You know, people are so, oh man, it's crazy. There's gonna be a strict, it's gonna be an interface, right? And this is gonna have just a validate function, uh, which basically could take in some things here, right? You never know, maybe uh, we need to check that and it's gonna return a slice of error probably, or maybe you could return something else. Some kind of a more specific error thingy, which can be easily uh, JSON serialized, you know what I mean? Um,
you need to check yeah of course like yeah 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 that's good you need to check that the http is post but that's the that's default stuff right like i said this is not the code this is not the source code right this is basically some ideas bringing some ideas on the table of course you need to check this and it's probably gonna you need to add your middleware stack in here you probably need to have uh, you need to inject your context here which is going to be a problem um which is going to be a lot of garbage so you need to be some context pooling or something i don't know how we're going to do it we need to check that right Yeah, Brachus Jackson. That's also true. Brachus Jackson tells us it's pretty nice. You add the strict tag validate. That's something that uh, could be on the table with strict tags. But the problem with strict tags is they take reflection. That's a, bit, a little bit of the problem. I, I think strict tags are nice, but strict tags can be... Um, what's going on these emails? Crazy. Uh, but strict tags can be very nasty, right? Because you're going to have... Maybe JSON strict tags, then you have this validation strict tags, and then uh, you're going to validate. You're probably going to do some in-depth validation. That means that your strict tag is going to be as large as the fucking root 66. You know what I mean? Not a big fan of strict tags, although. Yeah, not a big fan of that. And we don't have something in Go which can be some more Rustish, right? And I like these annotations in Rust or these... How do you call that? These macros or something like that. But hey, we don't have that. So I think making the simple validate methods, which basically means that each time this comes in here, right? You could do, for example, uh, if v from validator OK is going to be uh, reg data, right? Can we do... We, uh, we can't do that. I thought we could cast this to... to a validator. Can we do that? Probably not. It's going gonna, it's gonna to conflict us because it's... it's a. Uh, Can we? No, we can't, right? You see? That's already a problem. Because what we could do here is basically check if this is a validator. But what we could do to fix this... Whoa. This is completely... Uh, yeah. We constrained it. Ay, ay, ay. This is not far. Oh, how fair. I'm gonna do this. If V, if V OK is going to be data, this is gonna work perfectly fine. Validators. Okay, we can say v validate, right? Something like that, or return or something. But it basically means if you do not have, um, or you could do slice or something, it doesn't matter, right? This is just a pseudocode, pseudocode, pseudocode. No big of a deal. First of all, we need to verify things, right? So we make sure it makes sense. Eh? You know what I mean? Uh, validate, and then we just call this here, something like that. We could call this validate function, which coming from the framework, yada, yada, under the hood, you know what I mean? Uh, this reg data did not probably not gonna work, is it? Yeah, of course it is, right? Validate this thing, which basically means. Uh, so the reason why, again, the reason why strict tags are bad is this, right? So most of the time, validation is okay. Validate email, simple. Validate small, less than ten letters or something, or or maximum so so many letters. The problem comes with in the real world exam in the real world scenario. Most of the time, your validation will also be database related. Right? You're going to have a database, you're going to validate, which basically means this user is only validate if this request, uh, if this verification code is already exists or something. You know what I mean? Something. And then you kind of do that with strict tags. So then you need to have something else. Um, strict tags depends on reflection, which is controversial in some cases. Yeah. So it's again, it's all a little bit of a fugazi or a scam coming from the Go community, but strict tags are fine. But you need to realize that strict tags using reflection under the hood, which basically makes your code slower. Not slow. Slower. You know? Like I said, in a web environment, I'm going to say this again. Speed of your program is never your 
concern. Never. If you have the mindset, and I'm going to say this once again, and trust me, you don't, you don't need to believe me, but listen very carefully if you're so, so bad, someone like that. If you think that speed matters in, web in the web, in the context of the web, because speed matters sometimes, right? But if you think that speed matters in the context of the web, and you think you need to move to faster frameworks, faster languages for your application, for your program, for your web platform, you're never ever going to make it in your life. Never. Ever. Something you need to understand. The only thing that matters in the scope of bootstrapping, making applications, is marketing. It does not matter. It's marketing and how fast can you ship features? How fast can you do that? That's the only thing. It does not matter if, like I said, the difference between Python or Golang on a small digital ocean machine or the difference between Python, of course, Golang, Python, Ruby, uh, JavaScript on a small, it's, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it legit doesn't matter. Of course, if you're going to do the benchmarks, right? You're going to say, oh, but I tested my application and it's so much faster. Yeah, yeah, it is much faster, but how fast does it need to be? 20, 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, does not matter. It does not fucking matter. The user will never feel it. The user will never feel it, right? Uh, Jason Valid, that's the next thing we're going to talk about is basically ORMs. And don't get me wrong, if, you, if you're if you making, like I said, for, for example, I'm making this Hollywood framework, that's based on speed. I even dissed Golang channels in favor of a, a self-made queue, which is faster, just to be faster. You know what I mean? Because it matters. Sometimes it matters, right? If you're making a distributed system, low latency systems, wait, I'm going to repeat, low latency systems, which means low latency systems, low latency, you know? Then does it matter, but in the web, it doesn't matter most of the time. You need to get your web application out in the open, get users and ship features and market your app. And that's how you're gonna get successful and nothing else. And that's why all these people, you have two, that's why you have two, 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 different types right you have the peter levels of the world we don't give a fucking shit and take all the millions and then you have these nitpicking devs which never make enough money probably they're sitting at shopify or not because they're just fired or they're sitting at facebook or maybe not because they are just fired right and they know, know nothing from the world you know they sit at facebook they're making these binary trees which they need to reverse all the time you know they need to listen to twenty-five thousand different pms and managers and now they're fired and the only thing they can do is eat ben and jerry's because <laughs> They cannot market themselves, right? The only thing they do is on Twitter, I'm fired, Ooh, hoo, hoo. please hire me. I don't give a shit. I'm fired my whole fucking life. I'm fired my whole fucking life, you know what I mean? I hopped, jumped, skipped, jumped from job to job. And it is what it is, and I like it. All right. Where's your new of him? Uh, are you still a senior and a top G developer? Like I said, guys, I'm using this for demonstration purposes. Relax. What's going on? That's a little bit of the problem. You guys are basically still getting too much of your motivation from your editor. It's, it's bad. Oh, I'm using NeoVim and you get a boost of motivation. And don't tell me that's not true because I know it's true, right? You open NeoVim 
and you do these things and you think you're a god and you get motivation from that. I understand. It's nice. It's it's but but it does I don't get motivation from that anymore. The only thing I want to do is present you some nice and clean UI on stream with a big font. With a big font, nice colors with thunder request without I have this terminal here which I can use and it's all fine, right? That's what I want to do. I use the tools for what they, for what I need them. If I need to make a simple script or something, then I will use NeoVim or, uh, quickly. It's quite funny, young man. Here, Sherry is back. <laughs> Here, Sherry, I'm gonna read Sherry's quote because Sherry's always on point with his, with his comments, right? Uh, that's a quite funny young man and they would have started with partial vector synchronetics. <laughs> Sherry man, I'm still, you're, you're one of a kind man. I'm, I'm not still sure what you are Sherry, but it's fine. Zero Dip, you have started so many projects on Go. Do you have some kind of working solution or is it all outline? I'm just curious. Uh, a lot of proje projects are basically just uh, content, right? Just content. It's just, I have probably uh, 25,000 more working projects than you, but uh, look at this, right? The most of the things is basically Hollywood is a working project. All these things, GG Poker is kind of working, but like I said, uh, I need to provide content, right? I cannot every day, I cannot come out here and do the same thing because then my view rate goes from 100 to 60 to 20 to 12, right? So I need to come up with new things which most of the time is very interesting for me, the first phase of the project, right? All the other, like I said, I'm not a finisher, I'm a builder, right? I'm a hacker. I hack things together, take the money, and set margaritas on the beach, right? That's why I do this. Um, that's why I change my streams from time to time, right? Uh, but I have working product projects, right? It depends on the, uh, on the feedback from the users, right? It depends on the feedback from the viewers. If I make, uh, if I made Hollywood and I have 10 uh, forks, uh, 10 stars and nobody is asking me questions about it, I dump it in the dumpster. You know what I mean? It depends. That's why you need to make a lot of projects to see which one could have traction and which one doesn't. What works, what doesn't work. What do people want to see on stream? What they don't want to see on stream. Instead of reading books from all these scammers, right? Watching YouTube videos from all these scammers, I'm trying to figure it out myself by changing my content, check my analytics, rinse and repeat, and try to make my channel grow with the correct content, the product market fit, you know? Yeah. The Primogen. You know him. Oh, man. And that's the thing, right? As, as a developer, how many times do you start projects and you just, after a week, you're basically burned out and you leave them in the trash? It's completely normal. That's completely normal, man. Uh, what is your view on SQLC? Not quite sure what that is. Uh, link me. I can't, you can't, Heed. Uh, if you don't have an elephant graveyard of projects, you're not a real dev. That's true. What is an actor engine? An actor engine is um, something that manages your actors. Simply said. There's enough videos. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of videos about that. Uh, what do we have here? Validate rec data. Because I'm going to I'm gonna show you something. Wait. Um, yeah, it's going to be this stupid error here, right? It's going to say something like that. If... It's gonna be something like that. This is gonna be this. If errors, it's gonna be a problem because it's a package, but it's fine. I'm gonna say errors. It's gonna be this validate thing. <laughs> you could do something like that because errors is this. If len errors, it's gonna be bigger than uh, zero or something. You could do. Um, right, Jason. Write some JSON, right? Write this to the screen, write this to the front end, right? That's something that we don't care about this right now, right? Something like that. Actually, we could do this. We could do, we, we, could, we could panic here. Um, for now, 
Like I said, I, that's the problem on stream. I cannot make placeholders because by the end of the day, people will come onto Discord. People will basically knock on my door and say, hey, what, 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 why did you panic there, you fucking idiot? So everything, that's very hard as a streamer. Everything I need to do, I need to... Um, how do you say that? I need to explain what I'm doing and ex explicitly say this panic, you should never do that. It's to see, to test if this is gonna work. Something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, that should be nil checked actually, to be honest. Um, that's fine like that, right? Boom. If I send this, not gonna, not, nothing gonna happen here. Uh, but what if I do something like, in my validate kit user params, I could return uh, FMT add whatever something. Back. It's just bad. And now we have panic, you see? So it's gonna basically return this, this errors, a slice of errors, which could be anything. It could be your own error where, I, need to, I don't need to explain this, right? In a real scenario, we're gonna make a custom error, which can be easily JSON rep represented to a front end, much nicer than, than, than the normal stuff. Uh, because in Golang you have the, the, the principle, the concept of interfaces, which basically is amazing. It's, it's insane, right? Something like that. So that basically means that the only thing you need to implement if you want to validate your user is validate here. And what's happening in this validate, we don't care. As long as we return a slice of errors or something else. And this gives you the, op the, the possibility here to do some database stuff if you want. You can do, you can inject your database and so how we need to check that, right? This is out of scope, but I think this is much cleaner because you could check like if um, verify, you know, the, you know the thing, right? If verify uh, email or something, right? And you're gonna say p email uh, return the error, something like that, right? Or um, if the user, if the length of the username is smaller than this, if the length of the username is bigger than that, you're gonna return the error beautifully, something like that, right? What do you think about that? What do you think about that, guys? And by the way, for the people that are not yet subscribed to the channel, hey, consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comments. And if you want to learn more about these concepts and go, you want to level up as an engineer, you want to land a job, fulltimegodev.com. 50 hours, over 50 hours of Golang content, JSON APIs, microservices where we built five services, connect them together. We instrument them with metrics, Prometheus, double transports, HTTP transport, gRPC transport, Grafana, Apache Kafka, putangora.com, 30% off, only limited, only, only two weeks and then it's done. Then I'm raising the bar. All right, are there any more questions? Are there any questions, concerns about this thing? Uh, of course, the next thing, what we also need to take uh, in consideration here is the folder structure, right? A lot of people come and ask me that, right? How, how do I need to structure? Because they come from Rails, Next, it's, 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 it's all beautifully structured. And of course, I'm not a structured man. In certain scenarios, because I dump everything in the main, most of the time, and I, for the people that uh, follow the full-time good, of course, you can ask them. We build this, how we build things is very naturally and organically, and we start from no folder and we come up to a beautiful thing without the need to have circular dependencies, without the need to refactors. We don't, we don't refactor because the way we build things there is just from a lot of experience perspective. 
<laughs> what I mean. Uh, Julia, uh, no. Yeah, for the front end, like I said, guys, hey, there's a lot of things to discuss, right? But this was. Um, so for the front end is, if you want to build uh, applications quickly, you're probably going to use um, templates, which need some attention because I think the Golang template engine is not the best. Uh, but you could have, you could have a folder, like for example, the API folder, right? Where all your handlers live. Then you have, for example, uh, I call this the data folder because it's data. People call this models. People call this, I think data is, is going to be a suited, a very suited thing. And because you can have something like, I don't know, man, www. The front end is the easy part, right? Uh, interacting with the front end is the easy part. It's easy. Or you have just a template, uh, you, or you just have a modified template engine, which you basically say very simple, uh, the, the framework says something like this, and will create user, for example, um, this is gonna be a post to this user, that basically means that we're gonna return uh, I don't know, a user page maybe, something like that. You could do HTML or something. Hey, I'm just thinking about that. Return HTML or, for example, return page and you say, fuck this. Um, I don't know, man. User, user HTML or something. I don't know, or use it even uh, and, and inject some data in it, right? Maybe you make a user here, right? User, uh, var user is a user, right? It's created, right? Yeah, there's a user params here. Then you um, save the user, right, to the DB. And then you have the user here. And then you inject this user into your templates, into your page, func page. I don't fucking know, a path or something. Or a file. No idea, thinking about that. Uh, and this is going to be a VNE. This could be actually a specific interface, a viewer, which you can call things on. Like I said, there's a lot of a lot of possibility here. Um, it's going to return an error, of course, because otherwise it's not compatible, right? Uh, return null. No. And you're gonna you're gonna render. You're gonna do some template render stuff. The easy part, trust me. That's that, that's not a big of a deal, right? Um, <clears throat> Nobody writes raw vanilla frontend anymore, TBH. That's true, and that's something they better should do back. Um, that's that's what they that everybody is willing to use React for all these simple applications. Why do you need that? Why, why do you need your why do you need a React? Think about it, guys. You, you, I understand you guys are coming from a complete different timestamp. Right? You are born with this. You are born in this, in this, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how old you are, right? Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm guessing that most of you are basically maybe 20 or something, 20, 22. You guys do know not, you, you guys do not know how it was. You missed the best time to be a programmer in your whole fucking life. Do you know that? You, you guys completely missed the boat. If you think being a developer is cool, man, being a developer 20 years ago was cool. Not now anymore. Now it's not cool anymore. Because right now, you don't know what to do. You need to configure, you need to know everything, and then DevOps, and a file here, and, and I need to push it there, and ah, oh, bah. Back in the day, easy. Who won? Easy. Something like next but for Go. Yeah, I was thinking about that. It needs to be easy. Of course, it's the same thing like in Rails, right? Um, why is that popular? Or Like I said, I, I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, every big company is built on the concepts you guys don't, don't on the concepts that are not being teached anymore, on the simple stuff. Why are you going to create a React app for a simple application that's going to fetch 
some data to show on an admin dashboard. Why? For real-time data? Single page apps, I don't think that's, that's, that's. Hey, I'm just saying, man. If I have a big, if, listen, hey, the only thing I'm going to tell you is if I have a good idea, if I have a, a good business idea, I wake up in the morning and I have a fucking good idea. I want to build that as fucking fast as possible without any problem. And that's something we don't have in Golang. I cannot just go get a framework or go get something and have exact what I want, right? I have these things, right? Everybody, every framework has this, this posting and I need to inject my database myself. I need to, I need to find a way to do that, right? I have my own methods to do that, right? Uh, I need to find a way to, um, I need to do so many things. Then I need to find the database stuff. It cannot be linked. I want to make it, I want to be, it, it, it needs to be much simpler. It needs to be, it needs to be much simpler. So the, that people have a reason to come to Goline for doing that stuff. And uh, like I said before, seven months of YouTube, seven months of creating videos, people asking me the same things. How do I need to structure? How do I need to, what do I need to do with my database? How do I need to manage my database in my application? How I need to do this, how I need to do validation, how I need to do rendering, how I need to handle my front end, all the same. Does that mean, or, or that basically means there is nothing. There is no safeguard net in Golang for those people because they come from languages that have that. Django, I think Big Bucket is written in Django, Shoot me if, I, if I'm wrong. GitHub. I think GitHub is Ruby. Shopify, all that stuff. I think it is all written in Ruby, uh, I think. Of course, after after 20 years, they're basically migrating, of course. But guys, after 20 years, hey, their pockets are full. You know what I mean? <laughs> they are eating caviar tonight instead of chocolate. You know what I mean? Don't use the framework until you understand what the problem is solving. Um, best advice build something complex with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But most of the time, these things are not complex, right? Most of the time, the things you, the, the stuff that you want to build are not complex. They're pretty easy. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you it again, right? Uh, I'm gonna do it again here for the people that want to know how the JavaScript code, TypeScript code of a startup looks like. I'm gonna show you it right now. Uh, I showed this before, right? I showed this before. Contributors, if you don't look at this. <laughs> hey! Instead, instead of, if the people should actually, if people should know who I am, man, they would, they would be so fucking humble. They would be so fucking humble. I have the most commits in this project. And I didn't even write anything in the past year. That, that's, that, that, that blows my mind, to be honest. I need to notify them that something is wrong with the dev team. Because, uh, like I said, I outcode everybody. Yeah, I, I was a CTO. I, I, still, I still have shares there, but... Uh, This is this 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 thing is, is just is, is, is out of control. It's out of control. If you think that I'm basically a bullshitter, like I said, I just showed you, I have the most commits of this. This is a real this is a fucking real company, right? Something you will never have, right? Loving you. Check it out, it doesn't matter. We have an application login and that's it's a complete new thing. App Avenue, that's the thing. This app Avenue thing sign in, these problems here, you know, that's that's the thing. That's, that's the code you see right here, right? That's exactly the thing. It's master. We don't care, right? But you're showing. It doesn't matter. Nobody can copy this. And this is what it is. Try your best. You're gonna st it's not going to work. So look at this from a perspective. How does it feel to be to, to write things in Next? We have also have Golang code, which is the matching engine, which I wrote in Golang, of course. Uh, but 
this doesn't make any sense look at that backend components hooks this i wrote all that stuff myself most of the time look at this this is like woo, baby hey and i'm gonna tell you the basically the can i actually let me try to log in real quick can i do we have a staging thing i don't matter i want to show you the app because the app itself uh the app itself is actually if i think about it very simple it's 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 the does not need to be real-time data right and that's the biggest problem and tell it to your team write it on a piece of paper and if you don't believe me like i said i'm, I'm walking the talk right here i'm showing you a code base of a of a startup a three-year-old startup a next js code base from a golang developer that basically wrote more typescript than you did probably right so it has no real-time data it just fetches data from a database it shows that we have different we have buy side users that can log in we have uh, a sell side uh, in uh, how do you say this uh institutional uh, users that can log in and we have other users that can log in and we have admins that can log in right that's it and then some some depends on what user it is it's going to show some data and and you can create some stuff and all that stuff uh you can create contracts and strategies and and and, and some docu sign integration and all that stuff. but that's it and this is what we have like this complete out of control this is only hooks this is only hooks this is who invented the hook is a complete retard because this makes no sense use contract it's like Teddy even wrote this. Teddy is in the chat probably. It's it's unreadable. If I think about that, I still I still don't understand because it started so so it started so basically minimalistic, right? I started this. I probably have the first commit of them all in this thing. Let me show that. How how can I see the first commit? It, and this guy it needs to work much much harder because he's not he's not doing anything i mean i i didn't work for this code base for i think two years for two years i didn't work on this thing and i'm still out uh, and i'm still basically outcoding everybody on the team here that's bad news is it yeah it's a private repo guys it's a private i'm showing you private repo it's of course because nothing gonna not gonna uh, Nothing can happen. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna hack? Nothing. There's nothing to hack. There is not. There is nothing to leak here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leak anything. I, I, I'm, I'm not an idiot. You can see anything. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, what is this with cron security? Uh, with GBT out. Left secret. You know, there's nothing hardcore. What are you gonna do? App API request. What's that? This is. This is wrong. This programming has escalated in a complete in a complete wrong way, I think. I I made this. People are hey, I'm gonna say this. People are migrating from uh, Redux to Zustent. I'm the inventor of Zustent. I, I did not make it, but I'm I basically use this. Where is Zustent actually? How can I show you? Package JSON maybe? Resistant. I'm using Resistant from day one. This is three years ago, and just was not popular then. Just was not popular. Like I said, I'm setting trends. I'm setting metas way before. It's, 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 it's open. Now it's not. Now everybody is using Resistant. This last year, three years ago, nobody was using Resistant. Everybody was Redux, which comp I I saw that. I saw Redux and that other stupid thing. I saw man, this makes no sense. I was using this, I said, whoa, with reduce and all stuff, I said, this makes no sense. This is completely whack. This, this needs to change. I'm going to use something else. And then I came to something simple, resistant, and I used that. You know, um, like I said, this code base is complete whack. This is so large. It's crazy. It's look at this. It's so yeah. There need to be a different, there need to be a better approach. Like in Ruby, I think Rails now is the best framework by far. The best. 
the best framework by fucking far. There is nothing else that can match Ruby on fucking Rails. Prove me wrong. Nothing else can, can match that. If I remember this, Ruby is the shit. I was uh, distracted a little bit, guys. Okay, cool. Any more things we need to cover here? Any more questions? Uh, what do you guys think about that, right? What do you guys think about something like that? Do we need a single or, do, or don't we? Do we need this? Do I need to make this? Do I need to make this happen or, 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 or not? Or do I need to move to something else because I don't care, right? That's that's the thing, right? Are we gonna, are we gonna keep building our stuff in, 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 in the other languages or? And we're gonna keep go for these uh, small um, cloud-based simple services, micro microservice infrastructure shenanigans, or do we need something better, something cool? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Let me know in the chat. I'm asking. I'm I'm basically answering any question. Cross-site scripting. So why why do we like Go, right? So why do you you, you saw the repo, right? You saw you saw the fucking repo. Why did you ever worked? Because people are saying, oh, TypeScript. And did you ever worked in such a code base in your fucking life? If so, if so. It's a pain in the fucking ass. It's a pain in the fucking ass. And I, I'm, I'm speaking from, from experience because TypeScript even, JavaScript is even better than I, in my opinion. TypeScript is just annoying. These types, they, these packages, they never, oh, they, they then the problem starts when you when you add a package that doesn't have types oh my goodness then you need to do that stuff again crazy and then you have a big type and then it's not compatible and the compiler and you cannot understand because it's like type and type it's like rest so type 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 and even it's crazy an item and this and that oh man it's insane simple stuff direct golang is simple is made for simple men like me. We don't care about 20,000 abstractions of functions. Iter and, 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 and uh, first and last. We don't care. We are simple men. If we want the last item, if we want the middest item, we will fix it. You know what I mean? If we need to, to make a loop, we will make it. No crazy stuff going on. What you see is what you get. That's what I want. That's what I want as a girlfriend also. If I see her, that's what I want to get. You know what I mean? I don't want to see something crazy. That's why I, I check it. I check her very well. I, absor I absorb observe her very well. So I don't have some crazy shenanigans going on. When it's time to do some stuff with her. You know what I mean? I, wanna s I don't want abstractions, you know? Like these girls right, with these... In the gym, for example, you have these girls, right? Also men, eh? but girls, uh, they have these, these, how do you call that? These tight clothes. It's a special name, like a, gy a, a gym outfit for girls, right? With these, they have these insane glutes. It's crazy. Big thighs and all that stuff. But if you take that out in the, in the, in the, in, in, in your, in your ba uh, bathroom, <laughs> hey. That could, that could be a JavaScript error right there. 
That could be a compile letter right there. That could be some typescript shenanigans right in your bathroom. Because it looks good. But once you go a little bit deeper, you're gonna get clapped in the cheeks. Surprise, motherfucker! It's not compiling anymore. The types, you missed your version. It's crazy. It's, cra it's completely whack. My friend, don't forget to say I did. I know. I'm actually dying a little bit, but uh, it's fine. Uh, Phoenix is better. Well, actually, to be honest, um, it, Phoenix is basically just it's just rails, right? It's it's it has the same semantics of rails. Uh, it's a little bit more. Yeah, it's more uh, Alexirish, right? Um, Phoenix Live, you and all that stuff. Well, I should add against you. But nobody is using that. A couple, a couple of companies using that stuff, but it's not too, it's too functional for the, for, for the, for the majority. You know, always need to think um, if you're gonna build in, in a language, where are the majority of the people? Majority of the people are in JavaScript. Majority of the people are in Ruby. Majority of the people are in Java and in Python, right? So if you need to make these people a functional approach, <laughs> baby. You're not gonna do that as a company, right? You're not gonna rewire your developers with 10 years of experience. F suddenly, it needs to write Elixir. I like the I like the language, right? I, I wrote Elixir back in uh, Nash.io. Uh, Erlang Elixir. But uh, I like the the data stuff. The Ecto Ecto is amazing. Ecto data sets and all that stuff. Shin. Amazing. Um, Scala, for example, that's very popular, right? Scala, microservices in Scala, the way to go, Spring, Java. And then you have Ruby on Rails, but that's more enterprise, right? Scala, Java, that's more enter .NET, that's more enterprise stuff. Don't, people don't realize it, but .NET, Scala and Java is getting used a shit ton. A shit ton. It's insane, but it's a, it's a completely different type of, de of developer. That's a developer that always goes in a suit. You know what I mean? .NET developers, Java developers, they, they, there's something about them. <laughs> they go with a suit, especially the .NETs. They always have a suit and a tie. That's crazy. I'm hungry, man. Hey, but hey. Even though you, you, maybe you learned something today, right? With these interface and uh, with these uh, HTTP handler stuff, it's pretty nice, right? Some little bit of go, some good content today. You know what I mean? Relaxed, a lot of talking. We do wear ties. We do. You see, that's that's the thing, right? They they wear ties. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Not quite sure if a tie is, 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 is a thing, but I know I know from uh, I, I have a friend, and um, he worked as a dot, he works as a .NET developer, and it's, they are they are a different breed, man. They are they are they are different. They are built different. .NET developers are built different. Let, let us be honest. Oh man, Django is good, man. Django is a good. Like I said, Django, Ruby, Django, Symfony, Laravel, make. That, that's what that made millionaires 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 ruby on rails I, I think ruby on rails has made the most millionaires a lot of people won't understand that because yeah they, 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 they just don't understand it why they don't understand why Java C, C++ should be declared obsolete, rewrite in Rust and Go, although Mojo is potentially amazing. Actually, to be honest, guys, this Mojo thing, uh, I need to look that up, and I need to look it up right now. Mojo, uh, how do we do that? Python? Uh, Python Mojo. The cool stuff is with the new PC, it's, there is no porn on it here, so it's nice, right? Uh, I, I cannot do anything wrong in my history, it's, it's crazy, it's, I feel free, I feel relaxed on my my older streaming PC, I need to be careful because maybe there was some kind of a of a, a shady website I visited, right? Hey, you know what I mean? I am a man. I have testosterone like a fucking animal, you know what I mean? Like a polar bear. 
you know so sometimes a man's got to do what a man's got to do let us be honest i hey i know that because you're the same you know we don't we don't we, we, we are not different right but in this pc I, i'm free i'm free mojo what's mojo i missed something maybe it's gonna be a good uh, reaction video on mojo right the register modular what's mojo enter again mojo this one this one this 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 one is a thing all right so reject cookies of course uh mojo a new programming language for all developers is it this one this is not the correct one right is it Anthony GG, what tool or add-on is showing the window with the JSON object on the right? Oh yeah, this one. This is a uh, Thunder Thunder client. Uh, yeah, Thunder client. How do you do that? Well, you go to this, do this, and then you do install extensions. Press enter. Type in Thunder request. Press enter. Search for the Thunder request with the most downloads because that's probably the real one. Press enter. It's amazing. So many of the I didn't know that I was still uh, hassling around with Postman. It's so so annoying because suddenly Postman is transformed into this cloud-based thingy, uh, and yeah, I need to tap and and, and that, that's why I'm using VS Code here for demonstration. Can you do that in Can you do that in your uh, in your NVim? And people are gonna say, of course, NVim, you can do everything what you want. But can you do that right now in your NVim? Yes, because I'm using Tmux. But, but do you have this beautiful UI without tabbing? I don't think so, right? Uh, so yeah, that's why. Okay, Mojo, a new programming language for all developers. Uh, Mojo combines the usability of Python with the performance of C. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey guys, this is something that we need to take a closer look. Can we zoom this a little bit in for the blind homies here? This sounds like music in my ears. Mojo combines the usability of Python with the performance of C, unlocking the unparalleled programmability of AI hardware and extensibility of AI models. I don't care about this AI hardware and, and stuff, but hey, let's see. Get, read the docs, right? What is this HTTP tool inside VS Code Thunder client? Uh, in many videos uh, that you say that you don't like gin, can you explain why? From my aspect, it's easy to use, but in some scenario, it's slow. Uh, as far as I know, guys, gin basically um, uh, get up uh, gin. Ben. Gin. Ah, cannot even type. I, I'm, I'm tired. That's the thing. Uh, gin. Boom. Gin web framework. But I think gin is a little bit better here. Uh, Jen is a little bit better over the years. Probably this one. Okay. Handler fun, that's fine. It's gonna be this context pointed to a context. Okay, cool. Uh, let me quickly see. Beautifully. Standard HTML render, okay. I think Gen is a little bit better than, than, than it was before because I knew it uses a lot of reflection back in the days, but I'm not sure. But like, by the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? If Gen does the if it does the job, it's fine. Template must is classic template uh, thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But they're all the same. They are all the fucking same. There is no difference in these frameworks. No difference. Some use a, a fast HTTP under the hood like fiber, fine. Uh, but they all do the same thing. Your handlers, how, why can I not see this? They all use the same handler each. Whatever. Whatever you wanna use, it's fine. Mojo. Uh, so basically what I can see about it, Mojo is basically just Python, uh, but with, with another, some kind of a runtime or something. It's basically just Python, but faster. That would be nice, actually. Type here. Type Python. 
Zeke is promising. Yeah, but th these languages are not going anywhere, man. Languages aren't going anywhere. Mem said manual, what's this? FN? Actually, what the fuck? This is actually a new language then, or... or, 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 or It's a new language. I've got Mojo access yesterday. What do, do you need to have special access or something? What is wrong with these motherfuckers, man? It's always the same thing. It's the same with Jonathan Blow and his fucking J language. Huh? We are in private beta. Wow. You are a fucking private beta for for eight fucking years, man. This sounds interesting. So I thought it was basically just Python that compiled to something to, to, to machine code or something. But it's it is a complete new thing. What is this? Avan, this makes much more sense. Types and everything. This is crazy. Wait. You need a private invite. How, how do I get a private invite so we can test this thing uh, this week on stream? Why do I never, I have never access to these things. I'm a fucking influencer. You know what I mean? I'm spreading the world here and I have no access to nothing. That's so crazy. Jay, no access. I have no access to this thing. It's all monolith with strict framework, uh, mostly Java stuff and they are migrating process very slow. Yes, def, that's right. That's correctly wrong. In the world, uh, monoliths is basically coming back. It was how we built things in the beginning. It's how every company is getting rich. Uh, for some reason, like I said before, some people were basically influencing and we wrote everything into services, which can have a beneficial for some companies, I understand. But most of the time, if you wanna make something, you're gonna make it a monolith and you're gonna make it as monolith as possible because it's going to make you much more money if you do it correctly with the right tools. All these banks, they use it and they're still alive. It's called typed Python. Uh, you read that mojo for all developers, but they say it's for AI devs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why? For the AI devs, what doesn't matter? Just because they have this, uh, some... We need this, right? That, that's what we want. Um, we need a simple language that already exists and... But a bit a better syntax, you know what I mean? Or maybe I'm looking at the wrong product, a project. I have no fucking clue what it is. Uh, inference engine, what's that? Get sorted in Python. This is like overly complex. Am I just completely a dork or something? Because I don't understand what, what the marketing of this language is completely garbage. Because I'm I'm here. I'm let me go back to Mojo. Right, this thing. Now I see death and I saw funk. So what the fuck is going on? I still don't know. I'm here on this fucking web page and I have no clue what they are doing. Right? A new yeah, a new programming language for all for AI developers. Oh yeah, okay, that was my bad. For all developers, right? It's for AI developers, so I see. Alright. Why is it this sounds like I said this sounds like music in my ears, man. The usability of Python with the performance of C. And it's only for AI developers, it doesn't really matter, right? Auto oh it ownership is borrow checker, let's go. X moved away. Yeah, give away, yeah. I still think guys that this thing 
this transfer of ownership in in a, in a non-parallel world is not big of a deal, but hey, that's just me. I did TensorFlow, Neo Kami. The thing is, guys, look at this. I'm gonna show you something. Look at this. I'm gonna show you something real quick here. TensorFlow, guys, like I said, I... How, how many times do I need to say to you guys, owner Anthony, how can I, how can I search this? I'm doing TensorFlow before you guys were still eating fucking uh, mixed carrots from a from a can because you don't have any teeth. That's when I was using TensorFlow. Look at this. I'm gonna show you something. Where is all this bullshit, man? I even have a fork of next years. Can you imagine? Uh, God damn it! What's this? Reinforcement curve fever. Using reinforcement learning to play curve fever through a DQN with TensorFlow. 2017. Hey, I rest my case. You know what I mean? Uh, in Python, by the way. It's no fork or something. It's something I read six years ago. This guy here. You see? With TensorFlow and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Six years ago, you were probably still. Hey, still. Still playing with the Lego blocks, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. Uh, don't ask me anything about this code because I have no clue anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here. Um, but like I said, it doesn't need to be, right? I made this work. That That's the most important thing. Um, You plan to make more DeFi protocol videos? I thought they were very interesting. Yeah, I know, but nobody cares about DeFi protocols. That's a problem, right? I'm a slave. Like I said, I'm a slave of YouTube. I do what people want to see, and they want to see. They don't want to see DeFi protocols, you know. That's unfortunate, right? Because crypto is not. Uh, it's still. We are sleeping, right? We are sleeping. I need to be careful here. We are sleeping for a, for a bit, right? We are hibernating. You know what I mean? Hibernating, the bears need to sleep. Well, actually the bulls need to sleep, like a bear. I know it's complex, but bears take a winter sleep, but now the bulls are sleeping, so they're actually at, you know what I mean? Uh, Tori, but in Go might be a good idea. Whales framework is dope, but only for desktop. Uh, but is Whales actually not um, private? Build beautiful cross-platform applications using Go. Get started. I hate reading. I, I, I hate it so much. There's too much information and my brain cannot comprehend. I'm too autistic, so I cannot... I have too much HDAD. I cannot... I, I want to read all these numbers at once. You know what I mean? That's my problem. I want to read everything at the same time. I want to be here. I want to read here and here and here. And I want to... I'm like a dog, you know what I mean? I'm like a, like I said, like a puppy. I want to find everything at I want to sniff. I want to sniff everybody's ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? I posted my review on Discord. Okay, there's a review of Mojo on my Discord. Uh, too much tabs. Thank you very much for the review. Well, basically it's garbage. Mojo is garbage, guys. That's a conclusion. Uh, that's a conclusion. Ruby on Rails, that's where it's at, guys. We're gonna move everything to Ruby on Rails. We're gonna stop this. gonna not be gonna be a Go channel anymore. We're gonna back to Ruby. We're gonna transform everything full-time. Go dev, 30% off if you wanna be a Golang engineer. Do not do it. Ruby. We're going to make it full-time Ruby dev. Full-time RailsDev.com. Go there. 
Where is the time? This gives me so much nostalgia, man. This 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 reels was so cool. Oh, Husky, look at that. Look at this. Include question mark. And you had these autumns, you know, the, these autumns in, in Ruby was amazing. Maybe we should implement that in Go. Like for example, uh, Funk. Nothing. Right. Funk X. Right. And then we're gonna say, um, Foo. An autumn Foo is gonna be. Then, do you, do you guys remember the autumns? It was amazing, right? We cannot have that in Go. I never actually saw the benefit of, a, of an autumn actually in the programming language, but hey, it is what it is. Two, <laughs> 2017 as well, built in October. You win, Grandpa. Thank you very much. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. I don't know what Tori is actually. Hey, you making you you plan to make more DeFi protocol videos? That's what you. I'm gonna go back to this question. Well, against the against the price, everything is possible. You know what I mean? I'm a businessman myself. Hey, there is a price for anything in this world. You know, there's a price for everything in this world. It's like Bitcoin, you don't replace BDC because all the newer cryptos are better. Uh, no, it's not true. BDC is king. BDC and ETH, that's the only thing you need. You know? Hey. Yeah, by the way, I was thinking, uh, I was playing around this um, with uh, Prometheus, right? Prometheus and Grafana, I thought, why don't we... <laughs> why don't we basically, if you... Why don't you subscribe to a Binance WebSocket? and put all the metrics to Prometheus and then use Grafana to make your beautiful footprints. Or for your histograms and everything, just make indicators in Grafana. You know, hey, just thinking about that. This may be bad, uh, but hey, by the way guys, if you want the best crypto indicator tooling, you need to go to Trading Light, right? You guys know that? I already said that before, right? I think it's time you need to make some, some something. TradingLight.com, look at this. Look at how beautiful this is, right? Look at this. Hey, and try now, it's free. It's free, what do you What do you have to lose? You're losing money, you know what I mean? You're broke, go to Trading Light. Try some heat maps. Look at this, all the volume is heat, you know what I mean? I can't even sign in, can I do this real quick actually here to be honest? I can show you, right? I can do that. Look at this. Get the f this, this this thing I don't like him. He he's always in my way. This uh, this thing here. How do I did? We are friends. Look at this, guys. This is amazing, right? The, the, hey, Trading View doesn't have this bullshit, right? This is only a trading light. Look at this. But of course, today ETUSD. This is on Coinbase. We don't want that. We don't. We want to be on Binance, right? Binance. That's where the magic happens. Coin M. Actually, to be honest, let's take. Uh, BDC USDT, look at that, boom, you see, boom, this is where we are, it's, it's quite it's Sunday, of course, and like I said, everybody's sleeping, right, you can make your, your heat, heat, heat maps, look at this, that's where the volume is, man, look at that, if you're in crypto, trading light, that's where you need to be, and nowhere else, all right, Um, what is the best way to test external packages used in your code? How do you mean uh, test external packages? Because normally external packages should be tested themselves, right? Oh, my calves. I basically run today six, actually four, four kilometers and I got a cramp in my calf and now it's completely gone. Now it's completely borked. And I'm going to run a marathon in October. And I cannot even run four kilometers without having a cramp in my calves. Can you imagine? That's how far we've come. That's that that's that's being old. If a man can create a full stack framework in Go, is this man? That's true, man. Uh, like I said, right? Maybe we should do it. And I'm not gonna do it uh, for myself. I need, I'm gonna do it for because, like I said, people are asking me all the same things. So we need to we need to provide them with something, right? Something cool, something like. Um, yeah, like like a next but a better way. 
where we data driven, right? More data oriented, not uh, basically uh, put your whole users and uh, decode them into JSON for no fucking reason at all, right? No, you're gonna split that beautifully out. You're gonna say, we're gonna make this is a handle create user. It's a post request. This is where we're gonna serialize into this thing. This is our contract. Create user params and nothing else. So now you know here. You don't need to do if R is JSON decode. Nobody knows what's going on, especially if you're if you're coming from all those other languages. Now you have your user params. See request params. That's going to be exactly create user params, right? Return page user. It's going to return your user. Or if you want to make an API, it's going to return right JSON. It's going to be JSON, right? Like that. Boom. And then probably uh, I don't know 200, right? Boom. Like that. <clears throat> when are you deploying this framework for public uses? No, no, I have no clue, man. I need to build it first, right? This is this is pseudo code. I need to build it first. That's the problem. Build it first. Are there any more questions before I'm gonna close the stream? I'm gonna show you uh, something something cool, right? Like I said before. Uh, the most comprehensive Golang course. Most courses are scam, but this is not because it's mine. Right? Look at this beautiful sharpshooter here. And this, this is so annoying. 10,000 YouTube subs. This is correctly, but I'm al almost at 12,000, so I need to update this constantly. It's crazy. It's annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Two, 250. <laughs> Why is this still? This website not updated. What's going on? Is the program for beginners or experts? How many hours does the program contains? The total duration of the course will be around 50 hours of Golang content. Over 50 hours of Golang content. Do I have lifetime access after the purchase of the program? This is very important. Yes. Once you purchase the program, you will have access to all its contents and updates for the rest of your life because I'm going to update stuff. You know what I mean? This is not, hey, I'm, I'm here to stay. You know what I mean? I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. Does the progress as discounts for people that live in third world countries or countries that suffer from war? Yes. Send me a mail. How do you read high charts library for charting in JavaScript? Uh, no clue. We don't use them at the uh, trading light, right? Did you get a vaccine? If so, how many times did you do? Well, this is the last story I'm gonna tell before I'm going offline. But first you need to subscribe to the channel because the last subscriber was 30 minutes ago. So I'm gonna tell this story of, about my vaccination live on stream. But first of all, I wanna see on my mini feed that there is a subscriber. And as long as that does not happen, I'm not gonna tell the story. And this is a real life mini feed. So yeah, so I'm go we're gonna wait. Call somebody, call your friend, your neighbor. Somebody needs to subscribe. What about a, disc a student? Uh, what about discounts for student like? Uh, yeah, that could be, like I said, send me a mail. Send me a mail, come up with some proofs with some blood tests and everything, and then we can maybe discuss that, yeah? But first of all, I want uh, the subscriber, I'm gonna tell my vaccination story, which is basically completely boring, but hey. Where to start learning Go? Fulltime, godev.com. That's where you need to be, here. Right? That's where you need to be, here. Elevate your Go skills. Um, the website is on, uh, uh, we're gonna remake it. I have a little team right now. It's the GG, uh, how do you say that? GG Inc. Incorporation. We have a team. People are building stuff. I'm scaling up as a business, you know what I mean? No, I'm just gonna change. I just have a copywriter to make this right a little bit better because it's my spelling and I'm basically grammatically a complete dork. You know what I mean? I have the IQ of one, uh, if it's based on grammar. Uh, but I cannot say that in public. How many times did you get vaccinated? 
What's, what's going on with these vaccines, man? Uh, I, I have two fucking vaccines. That's the only thing I have. I, I, I don't want any more, uh, any more things anymore in my body. It's, it's fine. The only, no, I'm the vaccinator. I'm setting vaccines every night with my girlfriend. I vaccinate her. You know what I mean? That's what I do. I'm the doctor. Not, not, not all the way around. Yeah, are there any more questions? Because I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna cook my chicken. Proteins, a lot. 300, 300 grams. 300 grams chicken. You know what I mean? Because I'm no vegetarian. I eat meat. Meat all fucking day, that's important. Why? Then you have this. You know what I mean? Alright, guys. Thanks, everyone. For the stream. I hope uh, it was some kind of a. Uh, uh, you had something about it, right? You learned something about it let me know in the comments here uh, most of the people that's gonna watch this video on youtube will never reach till this point two hours in the video can you imagine who's the guy if you are the guy listen very carefully if you are the guy that still that watched this video not live and you are still watching this video after two hours send me a comment because you are a special man you are a, you are you are built different you are built different that's for sure you know what i mean uh can this framework have some template engine also? Yes, that's, a v yes, it needs to have a template engine because like I said, if I wanna build an application sometimes, uh, I wanna build a, a, a quick ad admin dashboard, I'm not gonna hassle around with React, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna do this bullshit, I don't wanna touch anything of that. And if I need to, to make a button, maybe dance or something, or change this color, I will use jQuery, or basically just plain JavaScript to do that, right? Just like we did back in the days, you know what I mean? That's where the man, that's where the, the developers Still, we're drinking beer instead of soy milk, you know? Now it's all about soy devs. We were, we were chats with muscles. We're drinking beer, programming and drinking beer. That's what we did. But right now, it's all about eating beans and drinking soy milk. No, no, no. We're not going to do that anymore. We're shifting. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Jump into the Discord community. Come and hang out and all that stuff. Fulltimegoyer.com. Love you. Love you all. Bye-bye.